Namaskar, good evening and welcome on behalf of Citizens for Peace. I'd really like to, with very heartfelt thanks, uh, thank our speakers and our moderator, particularly uh, Zafar Saifullah Sahab, who has come in spite of being very unwell. And uh, very special thanks to Govinda Charaji also for making the time and being with us. And actually, no thanks to Yogendra Ji because he's one of our advisory council and uh, we always feel that we can lay claims to his time. Um, we are a very small group of volunteers based in Bombay. And uh, the group was formed in 93 as a response to the violence which uh, followed the demolition of the Babri Masjid. And at that time, we did relief work in the affected areas. Uh, but more recently, for the last five, six years, we've been more in the nature of a think tank. Uh, but we've been grappling with a rather large question. Uh, which is that, what would it take to build a dynamic, plural, secular culture in 21st century India? Uh, and Peace Talks is actually about a much larger frame of questions which have to do with peace not as the absence of violence, but peace as the ongoing search for universal well-being. Our basic purpose is to create a platform in which we can take up issues that are contentious and difficult in a thoughtful and reflective manner, not to argue or debate even, but to really dialogue and search for common grounds. I'm very happy that we are organizing this conversation on what Rajni Ben said, a contentious and difficult subject. We're used to one kind of conversations on subjects of this kind. That conversation begins with people who share a lot of ground. There's an overlapping consensus. The starting point of that conversation is common ground, which takes place <laughs> in seminars, in drawing rooms, among people who share secular convictions. It's important conversation. It's very illuminating. There are differences there. At the same time, a sense that someone like me picks up from that conversation is that this conversation perhaps doesn't adequately reflect the anxieties, the questions, the concerns that are articulated on the street every day in this country. So what we've chosen today is a second, more difficult path. And that difficult path does not begin by assuming a common ground. It actually is a search for a common ground. It begins by acknowledging that there are differences, that there are serious differences. These differences are being articulated, no matter what we might think in this room, these differences are articulated on the street, in the minds of the people, in their hearts. These are real anxieties in this country. So what we are hoping to do today is a conversation where some of these anxieties are put on table. At the same time, these anxieties do not constrain our conversation, and they, they become the, maybe the starting point, but perhaps not the end point of our conversation, that we move forward and share for a common ground. And this difficult conversation assumes something which I would say, maybe articulating Ashish Nandi, I hope he's listening to me, uh, that it is the possibility of this conversation which characterizes this civilization that you can have conversation across very serious differences. And for this, we are delighted, we are honored, we are truly privileged to have uh, two of our speakers here. We have Govinda Chareji here, who has consistently, carefully, and in a nuanced way, as we would see, represented, articulated cultural anxieties which large, number of people in this country have felt. In articulating those anxieties, he searches for something larger, something Indian. I should underline the fact that there's more to Govinda Chare than Rath Yatra. <laughs> he was an architect of uh, Ram Janam Bhumi Rath Yatra. He was the brain behind it. He was an RSS Pracharak who came on deputation to BJP in 1988. Till 2000, he was its general secretary, someone known for his selfless style of working, someone known for his deep conviction 
which many disagreed with, someone also known to be astonishing political analyst. The concerns that have animated him have not only be, are not captured by what is popularly called Hindutva. He has been a passionate advocate for decentralization, someone who's taken the cause of small technology and traditional technologies of health and of, uh, in industry very seriously, someone who has searched for alternative models of development, someone who has followed JP's lead in reconstruction of Indian polity, someone who has looked for education models which are culturally rooted. So in that sense, his, his thinking has an expense which is much larger. He's also beyond much more than Rathyatra in the sense that after probably the most famous sabbatical in India's political life, which started in 2000 and which ended in 2003, he decided no longer to be a pracharak of RSS, decided not to renew his membership of the BJP, has been involved with many social organizations, including Bharat Bikas Sangam, Kautilya Shodh Sansthan, Rashtriya Swabhiman Andolan, Rashtwadi Morcha, and he is patron, sarakshak, chintak, philosopher for these movements. So it's in these capacities that we welcome Govinda Chareji. Mm -hmm. Om Vasudeva Sutam Devam Kansa Chanuramardhanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum Adraniya Zafar Sahab Mitravar Yogendra Ji Yaha Upasthit Varishth Jan Matri Shakti Or Mitro मैं ऐसा मानता हूं कि भारत एक भू सांस्कृतिक इकाई है जियो कल्चरल एंटिटी है इसको पश्चिमी समाज के सोच के हिसाब से पिछले दो ढाई सौ वर्षों में जो नेशन स्टेट की परिधि में बांधने की कोशिश हुई या किसी ने कहा मल्टीनेशनल सब कॉन्टिनेंट किसी ने कहा नेशन इन द मेकिंग किसी ने कहा नेशन बॉर्न ऑन फिफ्टीन ऑगस्ट नाइनटीन मैं मानता हूँ कि हजारों हजार साल पुरानी हिमालय की शाखा प्रशाखाएं जहां तक हैं और समुद्र इनके बीच का भूभाग जो हजारों साल से एक सामाजिक जीवन प्रवाह सोशल नेशनल लाइफ ये बिताने में सक्षम रहा है मैं भारत उसको समझता हूं और उसकी जियो कल्चरल ट्रेड्स होंगी उसी के कारण एक कल्चर एक ट्रेडिशन वैल्यूज ऑफ लाइफ ये सब होता है मैं उस सारे कल्चर वैल्यूज गोल ऑफ लाइफ आइडियल्स ऑफ लाइफ जो वहाँ का सामान्य आदमी रिलेट करता है जैसे राम और कृष्ण से सामान्य आदमी रिलेट करता है भले ही वो हजारों साल पहले हो गए ऐसे ही वाल्मीकि से रिलेट करता है ये जिससे रिलेट करता है उसको मैं जियो कल्चरल ट्रेट मानता हूँ उसको अगर एक शब्द में अगर कहना हो मैं उसे हिंदुत्व कहता हूँ और हिंदुत्व का अंग्रेजी अनुवाद मैं हिंदूनेस मानता हूँ और उस ट्रेट को कहना हो तो पांच पार्ट्स में कहता हूँ एक रेस्पेक्ट टू ऑल मोड्स ऑफ वर्शिप रिलीजन इज द मोड ऑफ एस्टैब्लिशिंग रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन मैन एंड द मेकर और भारत का सोचना ही हमेशा से रहा है किसी भी विधि से पूजा की जाए एक ही परम तत्व परमात्मा को प्राप्त होगी इसलिए सभी उपासना पद्धति के बारे में आस्था श्रद्धा सेकेंड सभी में भगवान का अंश है डिवाइनिटी इसलिए बड़ा छोटा इन्फीरियर सुपीरियर न मानकर उसके अंतर्गत की डिवाइनिटी को मैनिफेस्ट होने में हम भी कुछ कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटरी बने दूसरी बात तीसरी बात इको फ्रेंडली टेक्नो इकोनॉमिक ऑर्डर ये भारत की हिंदुत्व की समझ है तो जीव जगत जगदीश का संबंध है इसलिए जगत में फ्लोरा फाउना है एटलीस्ट इक्वल राइट्स टू एग्जिस्ट अपॉन द फेस ऑफ अर्थ एटलीस्ट एज इक्वल एज ह्यूमन बींग्स इसलिए उसी अनुसार टेक्नो इकोनॉमिक ऑर्डर हिंदुत्व सोचता है 
उसी प्रकार महिलाओं का नारी का मातृत्व के गुण के कारण विशेष आदर का स्थान यानी हिंदुत्व फिर खाओ पियो मौज करो मर जाओ यही जिंदगी का मकसद नहीं है द गोल ऑफ लाइफ ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ लाइफ ट्रांसेंस दिस ये मानना जीना सा एहसास होना ये हिंदुत्व मैं जिस राष्ट्रीय स्वयंसेवक संघ में पढ़ा हूँ उसमें मैंने हिंदुत्व यही पढ़ा है इसलिए इसको मैंने क्विंटेंसेंस ऑफ भारत नेशनलिज्म ऐसा मैंने समझा है इसी आधार पर देश बढ़े बढ़ सकता है अपनी तासीर तेवर ज़रूरत का हिसाब बनाकर हर देश का विकास पथ अलग अलग ही होगा